This is Julie Denslow. I'm at the 50th anniversary meeting of the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation and the Organization for Tropical Studies. And I'm here to talk to Bill Everhart of the University of Costa Rica, especially about his experiences teaching Latin American students for, for many years in, in Costa Rica and Colombia and elsewhere. So, mm -hmm. Bill? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I should finish your introduction. I'm half time with Smithsonian uh, Tropical Research course. Institute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I wanted very much to express to you or to go on record is that as a member of STRI, I have an a unusual angle of looking at Latin students through the fellowships that are given by, by STRI and through the competitions for those fellowships. And one of the things that I, it's absolutely clear has changed in the 30 some years that, more than 30, well, 30 some years that I've been um, going to STRI fellowship meetings, is that the quality of Latin biologists, of young Latin biologists, has gone way up. It used to be that you would have a set of applications for fellowships that would have one or two Latin young Latin um, applicants, and you'd keep them in as long as you could out of feeling, well, we've got to give some fellowships to Latin. And usually they'd fall by the wayside because in the end, the fellowship meetings are very hard-hearted and there's extremely intense competition and people end up deciding, okay, we have to go for the best science. That's changed completely. And now a large percentage of the best fellowship applications are from Latin students. And I'm not really clear on why that's happened. And I suspect that there's a, there are a variety of reasons that it's happened. But certainly OTS has something to do with that. And it deserves to get some credit for it. And, and it's, a, it's an observation that I'm sure that anybody else on the staff would, would say exactly what I'm saying. It's not, I don't have a bias in one, one direction or another, it's just a fact of life. Now many of the best applications are from Latin students. And I, I was um, amused to think about this, or I made a comment to this, about this to Ira Rubinoff, who was the ex-director of, of STRI. And he said he had, he had been, um, well he commented that he had read accounts of European biologists and scientists in general, I think geologists, etc., going to the U.S. in the 1800s and the role of the U.S. locals was exactly the role of the Latin, what used to be the role of the ignorant Latin guys that would sort of help you around and show you the way, but really didn't know much of anything about what was going, about the science you were doing. And he said he had always thought that that was going to, that was going to change in Latin America just as it had changed in the United States. He has a, some kind of long-term visions that, that, that most people don't have. But, but in any case, I think it has changed. It's in the process of changing. And, and very clearly, the, the talks in this meeting, and et cetera, are, make it really clear that no longer is it some softer kind of science being done by, by, by Latin. And the, uh, what about the interests of Latin American students, what kinds of projects and questions are they interested well, in, or, uh, or how does that vary among different groups of students? Okay, well, I, I think that's another, touches another point that I think is interesting. I, I think that unfortunately in the U.S. and in first world countries, a lot of um, natural history kind of science is dying. You can't get a job without some molecular adornments on your, on your projects. In Latin America, that's not the case. In Latin America, taxonomy, straight up taxonomy is still respected, is still something that people do. Um, I think that the, at, at the University of Costa Rica, the biology program is better than most U.S. universities in terms of learning, the students learning, knowing the names of what they see when they go out in the field, knowing something about what they do, 
not just being sort of lost in the field. And I, I, I or think this for a number of reasons, among which are um, I often go out of my way a little bit to talk to visiting students from, from Germany and from the United States, who are the most common uh, students that come to the UCR, and ask them how they feel vis-a-vis -vis what they're learning, or from Spain too is a, another common place, uh, how, what they're learning here versus what they had learned at home. Mm -hmm. And just about 100% say, oh, this is stronger in field-oriented biology than is the university where I came from, wherever it is in, in, these, in these other countries. And one of the crises, as I see it, in, in biology is the, the death, the slow, painful death of taxonomy as a science and the um, consequence of being more and more difficult get, to get things identified. And barcoding notwithstanding, barcoding is not, a, not the solution, in my case, in my opinion, because it doesn't come associated with real names. It comes associated with um, sequences, and you still don't know what the correct name is for that organism right. without going through a very difficult process, figuring out who, who talked about what, and uh, what were the characters, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's tough. And, and we're losing that expertise, and, and in my mind, the hope of the world is, uh, in this sense, is in places like Latin America, where that kind of science has not died, and is still alive and kicking. What do you see is the uh, what the future is going to bring in this direction? Do you think that the emphasis on systematics and organismal biology in Latin American universities continues? Well, continue, or are there pressures to? No, you know, well, I, I think that there may be some um, status pressures, mm -hmm. but there's another bigger pressure, and that's money, and it's cheaper than is That's all true. this, all the molecular kind of stuff. And, and the reason UCR, for instance, I mean, I've thought about this it, to some extent because the UCR biology school has gone through evaluations to become certified, or I don't know, that sort of crazy things. But anyway, so there's a little bit of intro introspection that goes on. And, and so I've, number one, realized that this is our strength. And, and second of all, wondered why it should be that we're it's stronger, and come to the what I think is the obvious conclusion: it's cheaper. And and so inadvertently, not because people planned it, but just inadvertently, people, this kind of science is stronger, and I suspect that UCR is not a, an exception. Uh, I have some experience in in, in Cali, and, and certainly when I was in Cali, it was the same same story. Um, certainly the same story. And so I would suppose maybe it goes on. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't see it um, necessarily following the course that it's taken in the U.S. and, and other places. Another part of this, of, of that same story, I mean, this is a diatribe, but uh, I'm sorry, but the, um, I think that, that um, biology in the U.S., is sick in the sense of being so geared to money raised by grant. And if you're going to have to raise money, lots of money, then okay, do, do a fancy program, project that requires lots of equipment and lots of um, reactivals and what all. Where, and, and if you just go out and you're going to, like, we were, one guy we were just talking today, you know, his, his notebook and his pencil and, and his eyes, and that's it. Well, that doesn't cost any money, and, and it won't justify fancy grants, and therefore it won't justify your getting tenure. And so there's that kind of pressure, and here there's none of that pressure. People don't even know what you're talking about. They're worried about what you published, and that's what's important. So I think that's, in that sense, it's healthier here than it is in, in at least in the U.S., I suspect it's, well, Canada's a little different. I think that they're not quite so focused on, on amounts of money. I don't know about uh, Europe and Australia. But anyway, I, I see it as, a, as perhaps going on, continuing this, this um, whole organism kind of um, emphasis being stronger here 
balance being tilted in that direction here vis compared with other places. So maybe it'll go on, I, I don't know. Yeah, and, and then of course, then there's the question of collections and maintaining collections. And that's a, a difficult question as the problems that Imbio right. um, testify to in, in capital letters. It's not, it's not simple, and, and the Imbio is now so, the collection is so big that nobody else can take it. Yeah. Nobody else can deal with it. I mean, they, they gave away parts of their collection to, do, to the UCR. Um, mollusks and, and sort of minor groups compared to insects and, and other arthropods. But there's just nobody who can, can deal with it. And, and, and what's well, going to happen, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's because yeah. where it's going is not a likely long-term supporting kind of organization. They don't, and there's, in, in some, some respects, there's no reason they should be. That's not what they're interested in. They've just got, got this sort of dumped onto them by. Right. So. Yeah, well, um, I'm grateful for your comments, and especially because I have long felt that the, uh, that the core strength of the OTS program was in its Latin American mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very good to hear from you that uh, you feel that that's, that's a strength and mm -hmm. that has been important and yeah. we hope it will be strengthened in the future as well. Yeah. And, and, and I would also give a plug to, the, to Farhi who was long-term coordinated this right. course that he's, he's the best teacher I ever saw in action. Right. He's, he's a genius. Yes. And, and, and he convinces these kids that they're having fun when he's really teaching them. that's he's cramming it right in. And, and, and they're happy because they're having fun and, and a man sucking it down. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, I hope we hold it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He, he's certainly worth cultivating and, and happily he's, he's Done, done it for so long for such a sustained way. Well, thank you very much, Bill.